How's it going, ladies? Bruce and Pop 6 Killer. Welcome back to The Divine Deception. We finally finished up all of our main chapters in the last episode, and this new button has popped up with the Omega uh, character in it. So I guess this is going to be our epilogue or another stack of cards or something. Let's hit it. It is a new stack of cards. Okay, so we're going to be doing a few more episodes yet, I think. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Let's take a moment to pause here. I know, I know, you want to get to what happens next, but I want to touch base real quick. We're about to enter finale territory. No, this is not literally the last scene, but it is certainly the start of the last sequence. Let's put it this way. You wouldn't even have need one full hand to count the number of scenes you have left. You know what we need at a time like this? That's right, times like these, every gamble counts. Don't have many left in the tank, you know. But we need some final opportunities to get big. So let's start with a bet that'll pay three to one. So you're going to bet on the outcome of this final encounter. Mercury versus the voice on the phone. The one who called Locke at Bark's place. Remember? Yeah, you remember. I want you to bet on the outcome of both individuals. The most important outcome. You've got two sharks. Which, if either, lives. Which, if either, dies. Place your bet now. Uh, I'm going to guess Mercury lives, voice dies. I think our hero will find the villain, slay them, and the day will be saved. Alright, let's go ahead, think that. But first you got to choose how much you're betting on that. I mean, it's the last one. Let's bet 19. I know I usually bet uh, 5, but we're betting half our chips. Alright then. I won't keep you for any longer. In fact, until the end of the story, I try to speak as little as possible. Panthea hangs in the balance. Enjoy the end of it all. Showdown. Hello? Hello, Locke. Or is it another name you'd prefer? The instant I heard the automated tint of a voice, I realized what I was dealing with. Who I was dealing with. <laughs> so we finally get to speak directly. You wound me. Saying it like that, it sounds like we haven't talked before. Oh, I didn't mean that. I just meant the first time I got to speak directly with the real you. So dramatic. And the real me, that would be... I had a chance here. If I could confidently declare a name, it was possible they'd think I'd completely figured it out and confirm it for me. So, then that left me with a big question. Who was the voice? Well, it's a red, it's a red writing, so it could be Polly. Who was the god? Or Cain? I might guess is either Polly Dysma or Cain. I don't know which. I couldn't hesitate for long, or else I'd know I was guessing. Ah, fuck it. There were parts of this that didn't quite add up in my head, but this is the best theory I'd come up with yet. Come on, Cain. You know I'd recognize you no matter what, where we talked. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were good. I knew you were worth having some fun with. The moment I heard the automation drop and Kane's real voice speak, it all clicked in my head. I knew my true enemy. The real monster of Pantheon was right before my eyes this whole time. Kane Shay, the Demon King. Tell me, when did you figure it out? I knew you at least suspected me when you sent me on those wild goose chases. I mean, Polly and the Duads? The hell was with that? It's called creating noise, Kane. I learned it from you. I was just returning the favor. Fair enough, fair enough. If you want to know, the reason I first started suspecting you is when I realized you might be plausibly behind my little near-death encounter on the Manjir. Oh yeah? How do you figure that? The more I thought about it, the clearer it became. I was definitely drugged. That was the only explanation that added up. But conversely, I was in a metal box alone. There was no smoke. Nobody seemed aware of my presence. The only explanation was that the drugging occurred far before I even stepped foot on the accursed ship. I met with you to learn the Manjit's location, or rather I did. Neat trick. I like it quite a bit. Anyway, you're so insistent that I at least got something to drink. I can't believe I dismissed that as just concern for my well-being at the time. Now, when I went to the restroom to take a call, you definitely spiked my drink. Not an instant acting soporific, but a slower acting one. Rarer, sure, but far from unheard of. And it just so happened the drugs kicked into effect right when I was in the metal container on the Manjit. Yeah, I heard about that. Sounds pretty crazy. And even that didn't kill you? Damn. You know, you're pretty lucky. I just happened to be in a horrible situation when I passed out. I mean, it's not like you could have known I was going to investigate the Manjit right after our meeting. Is it that lucky? When you really think about it, there were tons of situations where randomly passing out with no forewarning would pretty much kill you. Driving a car, climbing a ladder, pretending to be a duet member, taking a bath, doing an investigation. Hell, even passing out on a particularly bad street in Pantheon might be a death sentence. Really, the only way that randomly passing out wouldn't pose a major problem would be if you were in some computer-loving you were some computer-loving recluse. In that way, the sleepy pill acted as a natural litmus test. 
Pretty clever, huh? Is that right? You handled it like handled it like that because you were testing whether or not I really was heiress? It's not like I know everything. And I was also for some info it was also for some info scouting. I mean, if I get reports of Thane randomly passing out in the senior officers meeting, well, that'd be quite interesting. You thought I was secretly Thane? Once I got wind that there was someone going around disguised as different people, I got real paranoid. Who knows who could secretly be the enemy? Hmm. Anyway, even though I should have believed in myself, I wasn't confident it was you, after thinking back to our meeting at Smith's. But it certainly skyrocketed you to the top of the suspects list. I did say quite a long time ago that I thought Kane was it, but someone said that it wasn't going to be Kane. But I still had him suspected on my list too. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't even sure about my suspicions until you dropped the automated voice just now. You mean I went and blew my load for nothing? Talk about jumping the gun. I guess I was just eager to talk to you in earnest, that's all. Is that right? Oh, here it is. An earnest conversation. Though I have doubts this is really what you want. You doubt my authenticity? Cruel. Too cruel. Why do you think I went to the trouble of getting in contact with Buck? Before anything else happens, I really want to get the chance to speak with you. Just man to man. Man to man. Or man to woman, or man to whatever. Look, my point is that you've impressed me. I'm not a vengeful guy. Mercury? Mercury then. I mean, let's be clear, you've been a real pain in my ass. Legitimately, I haven't run into anyone as proficient at fucking things up as you for a while. And I think those skills could be put to better use. Seriously. You what, trying to pitch an alliance to me? That's what this is? Why not? I'm a highly rational person, Mercury. I know you are too. Let's cut to the chase. You're here to scam Panthea for a shitload of cash. You think there was money to be made here and you were right. But let's be honest, however much money you make, it's going to be a one-time score. Work under my employ and you can make big money consistently. You've already proven you have the skills worth the big bucks after all. So come on, is it really such a crazy proposition? Clearly you don't think so. But yes, yes it is. There's never been a chance in hell that I'd work alongside you. Really then? Oh, that hurts my feelings, Mercury. What's the holder? Actually, wait, let me guess. You don't like the idea of working under me, right? It goes against your sensibilities. You're not just after money, no, you're after power. Alright. Well, let's make things a little trickier. But I can be convinced to a... No, you don't get it. There's nothing you could give me that would make me want to work with you. I think you misunderstood the situation, Kane. Unlike you, I'm not evil. I won't help prop up what's essentially an evil empire. Evil empire? You're letting your Laverna slip out. Mercury, maybe you don't understand. I'm doing what I can to make a utopia. To make Panthea the utopia it was always meant to be. All of this, it's for a greater purpose. Maybe you don't see it yet. But I've been 100% honest with you about how I stand on the current state of Panthea. Perhaps the only thing that he has, he had been honest about. The way it is, it needs to be this way, at least for a little bit longer, to set things up perfectly. Is the method perfect? No, of course not. What method is? Aja was a bit of a dud choice on my part, and true, there are a number of small evils that must be tolerated along the way. But I know you're okay with that, I've seen how you work. Was that what JC was? A small evil? So that's what this was about. Oh Mercury, how you disappoint me. Are you serious, this whole crusade was what, a revenge quest? Boo, two thumbs down. I didn't take you to be such a small minded individual. I asked you a question. Was JC a small evil? How'd you even pin that on me anyways? Just out of curiosity. I know that after JC ran away from the first duet mob sent to intercept there, she met with somebody she trusted to try and hide out. And based on all the evidence, I'd say it's most the most likely candidate for that role was the devil. Doesn't trust sources, my ass. Why would you trust some random internet user who seemed to be against everything you were against? Side note, pretty vain to call yourself the god of Panthea, don't you think? Hey, it fit the crazy conspiracy theorist sh shtick. Right. And that was the whole point of the devil, wasn't it? Amateurish enough that no one would actually, it would never convince people. So the average user would actually turn them away from such ideas, making them seem more outlandish and stupid. But by the same token, anyone already hot on your trail would almost inevitably make their way to the site. And with how much you insisted people to get in contact with you, you trick people who were looking into the whole racket to come right to you. From there you can monitor their progress, slip and fake information, hell, your followers would even become another information network to abuse. And if they were getting too close for comfort, you had a way to lure them out for the kill. Like you tried to do for me. Like you did with Jason. Not a bad gimmick, wouldn't you say? <laughs> you know, in spite of myself, I can't help but be a bit impressed by the artistry of it all. From one schema to another, you have my respect. But I can't forgive what you did to Jason. 
Like, if she was such a clever reporter, why'd she come running to the arms of her true enemy? Thanks to her pissing off both dyes my ears, the duets were already out for her blood. All I did was drop her off for them to deal with. Wouldn't be mad at anyone, blame Mardo. Pretty sure he was the one who took out, took her out to the manji to finish the deed. Oh, trust me. I've already dealt with him. So I heard. Man, how do you have time to go around keeping all these balls in the air? And I thought I kept myself busy. Anyway, I'm sad that of all things, that could keep us apart. JC ended up being the final straw. Doesn't seem worth it if you ask me. Oh please, I thought you wanted an honest conversation. If we're being straight with each other, you never, you could never trust me, right? You knew the only scenario where I went along with your proposal was one where I intended to backstab you down the line. And you didn't intend to let me have the opportunity. This whole offer was just a backup plan, because you don't have enough faith in your main plan to kill me, do you? You'd prefer if I made it easy and just put my head on the guillotine for you. But that shows me for underestimating your ability to avoid the choices that would lead to your death. Surprised I hadn't learned my lesson on that front yet. You're right, of course. I was being real when I said I admired your ambition. But for now, I think Panthea is not quite big enough for two grand planners. Couldn't have said a bit of myself. The sirens I had heard earlier were close. Damn it. This was bad. I wanted to keep Kane on the line a bit longer. Tell me. Why? Why do all of this? What drove you to this point? You want to hear my motives, huh? Mm, sorry, but nah. Motive speeches are no good for... are good for little kids who cooperate. I think I'd rather just hang up and let you die. Not gonna tell me. Fine. I just beat it out of you. Ha! I admire the spirit mercury, I really do. But I have no intention of making my location clear to anyone for the foreseeable future. You would be much better served by making a run for it. Not that that would do you any good. I've already turned every suit and thug in the city against you. At this point, there's no chance you'll be able to escape the city's metal jewels. Panthea will be your coffin. Only fitting, right? If you're gonna try and blow the place up, you should stay and face your explosion. By all means, try putting up a fight, kicking around in your casket. I'm very interested to see how much longer you can pull tricks out of your ass. Endless mode. How long can you survive? Try and get the high score. Kane, you... Ready? 3, 2, 1, start! God damn it. After my conversation, I was left there standing in Bark's apartment. I could hear police sirens all around at this point. I was likely surrounded. Kane, you son of a bitch. From the start, he was the invisible enemy I'd been fighting this whole time. I'd been so close to getting him so many times, hell, I even had him pinned on the floor before, and yet... Now how was I supposed to fight back? No way. Now wasn't the time to think about that. Kane had given me more than fair warning that I was in imminent danger, both long term and in the immediate sense. But now I should just focus on getting out of this building alive. Stupidly, I'd not brought a weapon. The gun afforded me a lot of options, so getting my hands on one was my first priority. Luckily, I knew one idiot who was nearby and not equipped to handle one. I looked over to the bathroom door. I, s I spent a precious few seconds brainstorming a plan. A gambit like this would probably work. I took a few steps over to the front door. I knocked on it heavily and covered my mouth and made a deep voice. Panthea police, open up now! Immediately, as quietly as I could, I rushed on the front doors. So standing right next to the bathroom door. There was a bit of a brief pause, and the door started to open slightly. Buck was checking to see. Pistol still held out if I was still in the apartment. Maybe thought I'd left through the window. Regardless, it was a dumb move for him. The moment I saw the front of the pistol poke out, I grabbed it and pointed it down. Then I closed the distance between the two of us and punched Buck in the gut. Buck was by no means a fighter. With one simple maneuver, I disarmed him. I picked back up the gun and pointed it at him. Lock, I'm sorry, I can explain. I mean, you're a criminal and all. And I heard that if I just... Save it. What? I wanted to be pissed at Bark for effectively stabbing me in the back twice, but again, he really didn't owe me anything, and at this point in time I had a far, far larger fish to fry. Like, I don't have time for your explanations, but I need is your cooperation. Can I count on it? Well, uh, let me rephrase. Cooperate or I'll shoot you. Seriously? Bark, I also don't like any part of this, but you kind of put me in a horribly shitty situation. At least you can do is pitch in, right? I'm not even going to ask you to do anything that intensive or bad. Well, okay. What do you want? Stand here. Put a hand on Bark's shoulder and move him to the center of the room. Pistol still aimed directly at him. Any moment a police officer is probably going to knock on that door. I'm going to guess they're going to ask about me being here. You're going to tell them that yes, in fact I was here, but I overpowered you and escaped through the window. Got it? You want me to lie to the police? Yep. You lied to me pretty well, so I'm pretty sure you'll do just fine. Bark just looked down guiltily. You stand there. I'll stand in the bathroom out of sight, but keep my gun on you. You turn on me, I'll be shooting you. Not the shooting for you, not the cop. Hey Locke, come on, that's not necessary. I agree. I really don't want to shoot you, Bark. 
The back against the wall? I fucking will, so don't make me. What if she doesn't buy the story? Improv. And if that fails, then fuck. I'll work it out. I'm not gonna shoot you for failing, unless you're very clearly throwing. If that's what you're worried about. Look, just help me out, please. I need to have any reason to trust me or even like me. But listen, you care about Panthea, right? I swear to you, if, I, if you die right, if I die right now, nothing will change. All the shit you hate, the duets having control, the Olympo monopoly, the do-nothing politicians, they'll stay that way because it's the point. Right now I'm the best shot at disrupting the machine. That's been my whole purpose. I know we want the same thing deep down, so please help me out. Buck looked troubled, naturally. But at this point, a loud knocking actually came from the other side of the door. Immediately I backed up to my position in the bathroom. Police! Open up, please. We have questions we need urgent answers to. Buck took a half step towards the apartment door before realising he wasn't supposed to leave his spot. Uh, it's unlocked. Come right in. I heard the sound of a door opening and footsteps approaching. Mr Underwood, correct? You know of me? I do, you're running against Governor Raja. Uh, right. Oh yeah, that might be a bad combo. We received reports that a highly wanted, highly dangerous criminal was in your apartment. Is that true? It is. Or, uh, it was. They'd come to, well, con me, I guess. But then there was an argument about, well, political differences, I guess. For no reason, I began to flash back to investigating Nahoy's nest. Turns out Bark had a real habit of adding way too many details to his lies when he hadn't prepared them. Before I knew it, they'd overpowered me. Then they escaped through the window. The window? There was a hint of disbelief in Ariane's voice. That is odd. When did you say this altercation took place? Oh, not long ago. Well, I pretty much just missed the crook. So they went through the window recently. Hmm. Would you mind if I check out your window? Bark's face became visibly more nervous. He briefly looked over to me for guidance before realising that randomly looking to the bathroom would be far more suspicious. Well, uh, be my guest. It was really the only move Bark could make, but it was annoying. Whatever. I just have to take a gamble. Bark took a step back and awkwardly gestured at the window. I walked closer to the bathroom door and moved slightly to the right, changing the line of sight. I could hear Ariane walking closer to the window, and the moment she entered my vision I rushed out. Ariane was startled by the sudden noise and I tried jumping to attention. However, before she could make any real moves, I was behind her with a gun to the back of her head. Briefly I checked my six to see if she'd brought a lieutenant with her. No. Great. This is... No sudden movements. Start to race around and I blow your brains out. Laverna? You heard me. I did. You have me. Ariana put her hands lightly in the air. I didn't buy it. I saw the pistol holstered to her side, and with my free hand, I took it out and tossed it to the floor behind me. Instantly, I understood my mistake. Buck, don't fucking try it. I won't, I'm not. I'm just standing in the back of the room, that's me. Here to explain what's going on, Miss Smith. Not really, actually. Though I do have some questions for you. Ariana and I were currently standing right in front of the window out of Buck's, out of Buck's apartment. It was only at this point that I noticed the police officer looking up at us from the alley, sitting right next to his car. It was a face I only vaguely recognised. He had noticed what was going on and was currently aiming his gun up at us. This probably explained Ariane's scepticism at the left through the window story. As I'd guessed, the whole building was likely surrounded, possibly even this whole block. I used my free hand to open up the window in front of us. Then I shouted down to the officer, throw the gun away! Do it right now or I'll blow your chief's brains out. D Shut up. Drop the gun, I'm giving you the count to five before I shoot you both. Five. Four. Clearly not built for the situation, the officer threw his gun to the side in a panic. Good. That was a short term solution. I never would have expected this behaviour coming from you, Levitt. No, I don't know who the hell you are. Life's full of surprises, ain't it? Let me guess. You come to kill me on what? Aja's orders? Figures, since you're a little lapdog. I mean, that's why you've been helping her cover up the cock robin killings, right? That is. I'll drop the act. It's... Isn't it clear I know all about it at this point? It is necessary. The world is inherently cruel and violent. Without some order, nobody is safe. At least this way, the evil is controlled. Yeah, yeah, I've heard all this from your little assassin buddy. While I bet the message was slightly varied to better suit each of you, it is ultimately the same song and dance. So, was I right? I just sent you to kill me? No. I just being held hostage. If I do not capture or kill you, she is as good as dead. My head or hers, huh? Interesting. Sad to say, but I think I prefer mine. You do not understand. Aisha is necessary. She is the one maintaining the city's order. Is that right? Tell me, who do you think has their kidnapped right now? Actually, better question. Or perhaps a final deduction from the great detective. Yes, this is quite fitting. Lavina Smith can now cannot fully leave the stage without exposing one more crime. The greatest of them all. You are psychotic. I shall start in a rather unorthodox order, beginning with the why done it. 
I deduce that the death of your brother at the hands of the Shikome officer was what began your spiral from a paragon of justice to a perverter of the truth. It led you to cooperate with the duets in bringing down the Shikome. It led you to tolerate the peace they bring. And quite possibly, it led you to accept the diabolical scheme proposed by one governor of Pantheon. Huh? Tell me, who stood to gain the most from your brother's death? I'd say, if it, if it let the chief of police be manipulated into serving a false justice, then there'd be a lot to gain from such a cruel culling. You're wrong. I shall love Taka. Mayhaps. However, it is very, it's their very closest that may have spelled his doom. Were he to have learned the undesirable facts about Aisha's reign, then the need for his, for his silence would be birthed. Something to ponder. You're making this up. There is some speculation true, but I am an investigator, dear Ariane. Taking a look at these old case files, there was a particular a peculiarity or two that caught my eye about the whole incident. I was, of course, bullshitting. There was absolutely no evidence to suggest what happened to Aisha's husband was anything but a tragic accident. And if anything, it's more likely to guess that Kane orchestrated the death, though I thoroughly doubted the truth was anything but what it appeared to be. But large accusations, stated so confidently, held a certain weight. I hope that, just maybe, this may influence Ariane to put less gas on the search for me, if only slightly. Or well, failing that, it might just throw her off for a few moments. That could increase the success rate of what I was about to do. Without warning, I slammed Ariane's head into the side of the window. Then right after, I jumped out of it. I landed on the fire escape and jumped out from at the from that at the panicking police officer. A punch from that height with that speed absolutely must have hurt. Sure as hell hurt my fist. Not even going to mention how much my legs stung, but I had not a single second to spare on matters like that. Instead, I ran over to the car and smashed through the front left window. Through the open window, I opened the door and hopped in. As I'd gambled, the keys were still in the car, thank the lord. I kicked the car into ignition without even buckling my seatbelt and slammed on the gas. Right as the car kicked to life, I heard a gunshot. Two more would fire before I turned the corner, though luckily none hurt me. One didn't impact the car though, but luckily it didn't seem to hit any critical areas. Cool, I hadn't escaped. Except, uh oh, there were probably a lot of other cop cars in the area. That's not great. Neither was the fact that, actually, I wasn't all that good of a driver. I'd only driven a car a few times in my life, and now I was putting a car chase straight out of an action movie. Oh well. I was a quick learner, how hard could it be? Turns out pretty hard. The next few minutes were a panic combination of frantic left and right turns. Very few laws were followed, and the sounds of sirens seemed to be coming from everywhere. However, through what could be only described as pure blind desperation, I was able to put a bit of distance between me and some of the other police vehicles. One thing was clear though, I needed to change the wheels. I noticed somebody getting out of a car that just parked on the side of the road. Coming to a sudden stop that did a number on this thing's suspension, I jumped out of the vehicle and rushed over to him. Hey, sorry, I really need to borrow your car. Before the civilian could understand what was happening, I punched him in the gut and grabbed the keys. That was mean and possibly uncalled for, but these were desperate times. I got into the new car as I began to leave, I called out to the person. Very sorry, I'll leave a shit ton of cash in the car for your convenience. Report it stolen and give the license plate and the police will find it soon enough. Check the glove compartment for the money. Again, so sorry. No choice on my part. Bye! And with that, I slammed on the gas of the new car right as I heard the sirens start to get closer to me once more. Hopefully this car transition will buy me some time. I continued to drive just as fast as I could down Panthea's streets. I needed some time to think. Up until now, I'd just been focused on short-term survival. Which was nice, don't get me wrong, but that wouldn't solve anything. Fuck Kane's advice. I wasn't going to run away, not after everything I put into this gambit. It was now a death ma match. Last man standing. So then think. How do we get out of this? What options did I have? My mind was just scattered. There were too many factors to keep track of. Too many bits of information that might end up being relevant. And all the while I was dealing with an unprocessed thought. I finally found them. I found the architect of JC's demise. I could finally finish the plan. When I went to Panthea I wasn't really sure what to expect. But I didn't have a choice really. There was no way I wasn't going to come. Not after the video message JC had sent me. I watched it a number of times. I could practically play it in my brain at this point. Alright. Okay, I think this should work. Good. So hi. Or what? Do you want to be addressed as Mercury now? So stupid. You're still a child, you know that? Whatever. I don't have time for that. And I have a lot of time, period. So I'll just get to it as fast as I can. I'm sending you this video message because I might die very soon. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully you'll just get a message from me in a few days saying, Hey, I'm still fine. Please forget I said anything. But if you don't, after, I don't know, a week? Yeah, I probably died. Sucks. Ah, uh, as you likely know, I'm currently working as an investigative reporter in Pantheon. Trying to do good, shed some light on things that people are trying to hide. Turns out a lot of people have a lot of things to hide. 
Again, I'm low on time right now, so I just straight up can't list all of the evidence I found. And to be honest, knowing you, I'm sure you don't need that from me. The important thing to know is... Panthea is not okay. There are so many horrible aspects to it. So many I keep finding, and you know... I feel like there's a common cause to a lot of these things, but I just can't place it. You know, I end up poking around in places I really shouldn't. If you were here, you'd be laughing at me, I know. So much of a tattletale that I'd literally get killed for it. Some irony there, I guess. But yeah, I think I got close to some truths and now I'm on people's hit list. Any minute now, the duets could storm in here. I'm reaching out to you. I guess it depends. Before anything else, I just want to apologize. The way I reacted back after your mum. Look, I was in grief too. I spent so much time with your family. Your parents' death affected me too. But that's not an excuse. You were sad, you were scared. You needed a friend and... I didn't give you that. For some stupid reason, I decided to be accusatory and aggressive. Talk about how I warned you not to do anything stupid. I pushed you away at the lowest point, and that's not right. It's weighed on my conscience since, so I need to apologize. I don't like how I was then. That said, I don't regret my reaction to our next meeting one bit. God, I can't believe you thought I'd be... I don't know how you thought I'd react, but regardless, it was stupid. I know life hasn't been fair to you. I know the world is a terrible place filled with horrible people, but the answer isn't to embrace that. Honestly, honesty, teamwork, empathy, these are positive traits. Traits you used to have. I know you. You're not some criminal. You're better than that. At least, that's what I thought. Now I'm not so sure. Maybe Panthea's made me jaded. Anyways, I'm ending this message with two different requests to two different people. If you agree with what I said, if you listen to what I told you back then, then I'm talking to... To you, I just have one request. Don't do anything. Live a good life. A better life. Put your skills to good use. Remember me. And treat this message as a final goodbye. I'm heartbroken about how everything played out for both of us. I can't tell you how, I, how sad I am that we're probably never going to get to talk again. But I know that you can move past this and live a good life. That's my final wish to you. I've seen the video now and treat it as a goodbye. On the other hand, if you really are a criminal, deep down, if you're the person you claim to be when you met up with me, then I'm talking to Mercury. And if I'm talking to Mercury, then I figure all that junk I just said went in one ear and out the other. So here's what I ask of you. Come to Panthea and avenge me. I know you can do it, even though I couldn't agree with it. I have to admire, admit, your work at Aurea was very impressive. Very you. I looked into it after the fact, of course. So I know that you're capable of doing this if you want to. There's even a lot of money to be made here if that'll sweeten the deal. Money you can take from people who don't deserve it because apparently that matters to you. If you're listening to this, I'm a bit sad that you're not the same person I grew up with, but at the very least, if you're going to live the life that you've chosen, you might as well still do good. I tried to save Panthea Mercury. I did my best. But as it is now, I'm not sure it can be saved. So then my final request? If I couldn't save Panthea, then you need to destroy it. Yep, the video was still stuck in my head. As well as my confused reaction to it. For a brief bit, I was conflicted. My weaker side did not want to listen to that first re did want to listen to that first request. But the more I thought about it, the clearer it became. Josie had only thrown in that first part to give me an out, because she was nice. She didn't want to force me into avenging her. Well, guess what? I wasn't forced into it. I wanted to. Josie was the last connection of my previous peaceful life. My oldest, closest friend, despite the distance had grown between us. For her just to be disposed of? No. I wouldn't stand for it. And so I came to Panthea on a crusade. Slowly, methodically, I would tear it down from the inside. Laverna, Vels, Locke, Olaf. I threw out all sorts of lures to start finding ends. I didn't make any unnecessary moves early. I put in the necessary preparation. With a stone cold determination, my plan to bring Panthea to its knees began. As I began to see cracks, I made sure to expand them, confident that before too long my work would pay off. It wasn't as though I had a specific plan on how to proceed, I just gave myself a lot of options and waited for the right opportunities. I would burn away the corruption JC was chasing. I'd make a shitload of money to live off while doing it, and in the end, I'd take revenge on whoever was truly responsible for her death. Kane Shay, the multi-headed ruler, the man of many masks, the devil, the jinn, the oracle, the god. Through puppets and proxies, he kept the city marching to his beat. While there were still some questions I had at this point, I had pretty solid theories on the methods and motivations behind his work. <laughs> you know, in some ways, maybe it was inevitable. It kind of made sense that I was the one to succeed when JC and so many others had failed. It took a deceiver to kill a deceiver. From what I could tell, Kane's greatest weapon was information, so by throwing out so many lies, it made sense to be able to disrupt them. But I was still left with a critical question. How was I going to get to him? Kane was sharp. He wasn't going to come out of his hiding spot easily. 
and he wouldn't take refuge in any place I could reasonably guess, so there had to be some way to get to him. Think. Think. My best bet was to target one of his true connections. The Trimurti members. Well, I kind of killed one of them, which left one option. I drove as fast as I could to the forest. The Odin's mansion. After a bit of time I'd arrive without too much trouble. Okay. Before getting out of the car I checked my pistol just to be sure. Fuck. Turns out the gun wasn't loaded. <laughs> Does that mean when Bark was pointing it around at me he never had any intention to shoot me? And then when he was going along with my plan he wasn't actually scared for his life? Sweet. Pretty fucking annoying now that I was out in the middle of nowhere still without a weapon. Whatever. It was Odin. Did I really need to be armed? I got out of the car and began walking to the mansion's front door. And right at the front door I stopped. I turned around. And then I sighed. Of course. This was my fault. Fucking whatever. I'd have to deal with it I guess. I opened the front door. Surprise surprise it wasn't even locked. I wouldn't put it past Odin. Hello? Anyone around? I called out and got no response. I could look around the mansion. But I had a nasty little instinct as to where I might want to check first. Underneath. Extremely reluctantly I made my way over to the room. With the staircase to Odin's underground war room. Sure enough, the weapons had already been moved so as to unlock the plaque. The cinder blocks I had covered the plaque with earlier were also no longer around. Fun! I lifted up the plaque and began to make my way down the staircase. Before too long, I did in fact see Odin, and also I saw Art and Polly. This didn't surprise me, since I noticed their cars outside the building earlier. All three were hiding out in the war room. Well, less hiding out and more arguing intensely. You gotta fucking do something, Odin! It's our company. Without your help, the whole thing's going belly up. Perhaps it is deserved. Foolish men duped by wenches that work beneath them are not fit to inherit the glory of Olympo. Father, please contain yourself. I've already prepared some potential legal remedies and counterattacks. However, before we do anything, I believe there are some explanations that you owe us. Explanations are not owed, they are earned. It's not half a mind to... It was at this point that Art trailed off and the three men rec recognized my approach. What the... Vels? No, wait, is that... Eris? Polly was actually one of the biggest risks I'd encountered throughout my stay in Panthea, at least in regards to keeping my identities hidden. Unlike almost everyone else in the city, we'd actually spend a reasonable amount of time in person with two separate identities, in fair lighting and non-hectic conditions. Honestly, if there was anyone who was likely to see through my act, Polly probably had the best opportunity. Luckily for me, despite his tough talk, he was an idiot. Incidentally, Polly also ranked pretty highly on my god suspect scale. Ah, Mercury, it seems you were kind enough to join us, now that the Cataclysm is finally upon us. Would you prefer Laverna? Locke, perhaps. Mercury's good, though honestly I don't care what you call me. What is this? What on earth is going on? Doesn't concern you, Art. I just want to have a chat with your dad. I would think it very much concerns me then. You know, Art, Polly, you've both been blaming each other for Olympo's demise. And while that's partially true, the indiv individual truly responsible for your defeat stands before you. Is that really true? Surely not. Both brothers' eyes turned toward me, clouding with suspicion and anger. Fucking... Really, Odin? Do we have to do this? At this point, you should surely understand my philosophy by now. The weak shall be trampled. Now your metal shall truly be tested. Art. Polly. This individual is the enemy responsible for our downfall. Here to finish the job. Whichever of you kills them first shall inherit all that I own. For a moment, neither Art nor Polly made a move. For the record, I'm not doing this for your stupid will. Saying that, Art reached over and grabbed a sword from one of the nearby displays. You gonna sword fight me? He held it out in what looked like proper form. Oh, fucking course, Art would know sword fighting. To settle things like this, how barbaric. You know, fuck it. I've been looking to take out this anger. Polly reached over and slammed a wine bottle on the nearby table, creating an impromptu weapon. To such speed, I had to wonder if he'd done it before. Now that's a weapon! <laughs> hey guys, we really don't have to do this. You've struck at my legacy, child. You stand against the dice of blood itself. I grin at ambition, but there are certain things I sh simply shall not abide. Crumbling my company is one such sin. Make it out of here alive, then consider yourself pardoned. Would you shut up, old man? I need to talk about what will happen if he gets out alive when I'm going to have him bleeding on the floor in 20 seconds. Just stay out of my way. Guess we're doing this. <sighs> man. No, I'm not going to skip. Art started by rushing up at me and swinging the sword with deadly force. I could imagine, I could immediately tell he wasn't going to be swinging once. Slash slice. Stab swing. Slice swing. Stab slash. Oh, I'm already, I'm already lost. Slice stab. I'm slash stab. Slice. Oh man. Slice slice. 
I don't know. That one. I should have skipped, shouldn't I? I'm sorry, I should have skipped. Yeah, yeah, whatever. No. That one. No. I already lost all my chips. <laughs> nothing. We just have to do nothing. Great. Okay. Do nothing then. I have a. I have a drink. Asshole. I don't know why I don't skip these. It's my pride, you know, it gets in the way. I let out three deadly slashes at me, each with incredible lethality. There was absolutely no way to thread that needle. Instead, I just kept my distance, jumping back out of the way of the swings. Not the best you got. Art's brow furrowed. Yeah, winning this guy's pride was sure to be effective. Art charged forward, gripping the sword's hilt with both hands. He was up with letting me simply stay out of the way. Ah, oh, man. Slice, swing, stab, slash. Slice, stab. The words all sound so similar. That's the problem. I lifted his weapon above his head with both hands and made to slash down at me. Unfortunately, he took for granted the wind-up this maneuver would require. I popped him a straight punch in the nose, completely interrupting his attack. Annoyed, Art wildly swung the sword once more across the air. Like the world's highest stake limbo contest, I leaned under the blade just in time, then jumped up, spun around and slammed my foot into the side of Art's head. Again, Art stumbled back, and I pressed my advantage, running forwards and kicking him straight in the jaw. Art was reeling and Polly didn't care. With an annoyed expression on his face, Polly pushed his brother over to the side and rushed at me with his fists clenched, broken bottle in his right hand. Ah, left hook, right strike. Left strike. Right uppercut. Right hook. Right strike. Right strike? Polly swung down at me with his right fist. I simply swayed to the side and reached out and grabbed his long hair. Head in hand, I slammed the side of Polly's skull into the nearby table. Then I pushed down on him on the table and wrapped both hands around his throat. But I didn't grip too hard, anticipating what the other brother was about to do. Seeing an opportunity, I recovered Art stabbing down at me with his sword. The moment I heard that movement, I let go of Polly and dove to the right. Art completely whiffed me, but he'd end up glancing Polly on the side with his attack. Polly cried out in pain at this. I just lifted up his sword and turned back to me. Someone should have taught this man some manners. Had he been more apologetic, perhaps Polly would not have retaliated with an out of nowhere punch. I cried out similarly and then turned to, to face, of all people, Polly. I could barely hide my smirk, but then... Art? Polly? Art? Odin? Me? Art? Someone else? Odin? Uh, Odin. Just in time, I crouched down, one hand on the floor, one hand outstretched. I ducked right out of the way of, the loose, of a loose arrow, which flew right over my head and passed dangerously close to Polly. I turned around and saw a grinning Odin holding a crossbow. Motherfucker! If you want anything done, you have to do it yourself. You can almost hear him saying that aloud. True, I suppose. Reload. As Odin attempted to load another arrow, I decided to take care of the weakest target first. I ran over and kicked him in the stomach with full force. Ungracefully, the man slumped over, collapsed into the ground. Odin's godlike nature didn't hold, much hold too much scrutiny. In reality, the man was no more than an old, crazed man. Not someone who should be picking fights. Turning back to the more pertinent threats, I saw Art picking up a nearby shield off another display case. Meanwhile, Polly was just running around the table, clearly having a specific display in mind. While that certainly felt ominous, Art posed a more immediate effect. It was certainly more making liberal use of the weapon displays. Should I follow suit? Yes. Sword, shield, spear, kunai, axe. Oh man. Uh, I think axe came up three times. Oh man, I don't know now. Axe. Fuck. Can we do it again? Sword, shield, spear, kunai, axe. Sword, spear, kunai, axe. So just shield left now. Shield, kunai, axe. Oh man. Shield? Ah, oh, come on, I don't fucking know. Maybe I should just do nothing. Let's do nothing. Let's see what happens. Stupid minigame. I hate it. No. In the time it would take to grab a weapon, some dies and run sure which would take the opportunity to attack. In addition, I could claim to be particularly proficient with any specific weapon. I'd just do this barehanded. I rushed to Art now, holding, hiding behind his shield. As I approached though, he peeked out, clearly acknowledging my approach. Slice stab, slash stab. Slice swing. Slice, slice. 
Slice stab? No. Slash stab, is it? No. Oh man. I guess it's nothing again, right? I'm just gonna go do nothing again. I don't have a memory, you see. That's my problem. Ultimately, Art refused to take any proactive attacks at me. People of reprisal, and instead he simply stayed hidden behind the shield. I can work with that. I continued to run at him. And right when I got within range, I jumped up. Then, in an act of acrobatics, that even impressed myself, I used the shield as a leap pad to bounce up in the air. Looking at my mid-air form, a look of fear passed over Art's eyes. He held the shield above him in a hollow attempt to block my attack, and did little to stop my momentum as I fell back down on top of him. And before I knew it, I had him pinned one foot on each of his wrists. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, this would be curtains, but to my great displeasure, it wasn't one-on-one. -on -one. Despite my best wishes, I couldn't help but look over to the left, and sure enough, Polly had just pulled a classic dueling pistol off the rack. Shit! Duck, dodge, dip, dive, duck. Just in time, I dove out of the way as Polly fired a bullet right in my direction. I stayed ducked down under the desk, and I heard the sound of Polly approaching. Before I knew it, I saw Polly jumping over the desk, pistol aimed down. Luckily, his loud approach already signaled to me his great intent, and I was prepared to jump out of the way. Unfortunately, I ran into a now recovered art. Shit! He lifted his sword, which he picked up off the floor and lifted it before flinching. At what? I turned around, and Polly lifted his pistol once more. I was clearly none too pleased with the prospect of Polly missing and shooting him. I thought Polly would completely ignore this concern, but to his credit, he hesitated, slightly lowering his pistol. Then, after a moment's contemplation, he reached over and grabbed a hand axe off the nearby wall with his free hand. In the same clean motion, he rushed to slash down at me. Ah, <sighs> slash, slice, slice, swing. Stab, slash, slice, stab. Stab, swing? Slash, stab? Slice, sl I don't know. I, get, uh, I fucked it up. Click. This is my moment. I caught the arm that held the axe mid swing and then moved forwards and slammed my head into Polly's. Not a second away, so I grabbed a handful of Polly's hair and brought his head down onto my knee, landing another critical blow. In a stupor, I reached down and grabbed the pistol from Polly's hand. His face reacted to this and he tried to reach out for it. Instead, I just clocked him across the head with the butt of the pistol. Three times the charm, Polly's completely knocked to the floor in this instance, and without any hesitation, I turned around and pointed the pistol in the other direction. Just as I did this, Art stopped his swing with the sword, aimed directly at my forehead. The blade stopped maybe a foot above its target at that. Art stood frozen in place, unable to take the final swing, knowing what my reaction would be. It's over. Drop your weapon. I said this not as a threat, not with rage, not with fear, just as a flat statement. Art just stared at me, filled with an emotion I couldn't even peg. Whatever it was, it was tearing him up from the inside. For a few painful seconds, nobody moved. Then, plunk. With a blank expression, Art just dropped his sword to the side. The moment the sword hit the floor, I leaned forward and punched Art straight in the stomach. Then I took his recoiled body and threw it over to the wall, where his brother lay, and his father lay. In this moment, the entire Dysma clan was incapacitated. Good. Now that's settled, I need to get to work. I picked up the sword and held it to Odin's neck. What do you know about Kane Shay? Talk. I'll kill you. I know you won't, not while I'm needed. I'll hurt you. Bring it. I regularly hurt myself to grow accustomed to it. Gross. How about I kill your kids? The fuck? Do it, they're failures. So that one coming. What have I done with my life? You know, I never would have bet on the fact that all of my out of all of my kids, Devin would be the last one to become a failure. How the hell is that fucking creep show not a failure? He's an assassin, a valuable asset of Aisha. That is power. More than two businessmen in a defunct business at any rate. Holly looked over to me. How the fuck do you get off? What did we ever do? Olympo's just doing its best, you know, to grow and shit. Yeah, it sucks shit, but do you have to wipe it out completely? Where are the employees gonna go? They'll find somewhere, I'm sure. Besides, let's not pretend this is something that it's not. The only reason you're throwing a tantrum is because you realize that your primary source of income has just been shut off. That's not true. It isn't? Want me to guess what would have happened if you did end up in control of Olympo? You would have made a bunch of reckless decisions that made you feel good, but would have completely driven the company into a wall. Then you would have realized that you were fucking up. You go back to daddy to put the company in responsible hands because even though helping out the little guy is fun and you want to pretend to be a good person, you've never really been anything but selfish. I'll fucking kill you. Polly well, stood up in a rage, but I was expecting it. Before he could get any momentum, I kicked him straight in the stomach. He fell back to the ground, clutching his chest in pain. Moron. Devin had the right idea. I should have cut ties with all of you. I couldn't waste any more time dealing with petty dysmus squabbles. Between I Odin, Art, Polly, and Devon, I'd had my fill of that family for a lifetime. The full horseman of the Panther Apocalypse, more like. Anyway, what to do? I need leads. I need information. 
I looked around and I saw a phone sitting on the nearby table. I picked it up. This is yours, Odin? Perhaps? Okay, so yes. It seems locked. What's the password? Kill me. And I may spill it out in my blood. Has anyone told you you're a lot? Whatever. I can, can't deal with this now. I looked some more and noticed an open laptop unlocked. A bit more examination revealed it was arts. He was clearly juggling a thousand things at once, all trying to handle the fallout from Kara's explosion. I could poke around here, but I doubt it would get me any closer to Kane. But an open computer meant I had digital access. It was a long shot, but maybe, just maybe, I could crack open his phone with this. Aw oh, man, I'll bring you back. Fuck, this is going to be a long episode. Why is this one so big? It's fucking humongous. I can't even see the information button. Well... You know what? Screw it. I just want to see the end. Can we skip this? I've had enough of this. I just want to see what happens. And this has been a long enough episode already. Yes, I was in. Fantastic. I know it's probably trying to get back up silently, so I walked over and kicked him in the stomach again. Uh. Alright, Odin's phone. Let's see. After some quick scanning, I eventually found a message chain with someone I can only assume was Kane. The latest message was actually unchecked by Odin. Let's see. Apologies, but I had to kill Devin in the governor's office. I know he's your son and all, but he was going to ruin everything and I gave him a fighting chance. I hope this isn't a major issue. Heart. Putting aside the nature of the message, Devin died? Oh, damn, that's kind of a shame. Though maybe for the best, I had no idea what to do with him. At least he had a change of heart before being killed. That probably did him some cosmic good, if you believed in that sort of spiritual shit. Anyway, there was something about this message. I could feel it. What was it? What was I thinking? Oh, for fuck's sakes. Can we... Can we not just fucking see the end now? Thank you, Devin. Nah, fuck you. Keep moving. Have you died in the governor's building? I had a spark of inspiration. I can see it. Way to lure Kane. Maybe if I hadn't already been recording this episode for 47 minutes, I could be bothered with that. But... No. The way to lure Kane out. Maybe the only way to lure Kane out. Then... Should I send a message back? No, no. Kane was sharp. Too sharp. Too sharp at times like this. The only chance I had for my plan to work was to get his cooperation. Kane killed Devin. What? Oh damn, that sucks. I mean, yeah, he tried to kill me, but Devin's still family, you know? No. Hm. It appears all my spawner failures. Truly, heaven mocks. Is this my curse for failing Zahak? Would be fitting, I suppose. What the fuck, Odin? Odin, Devin wasn't a failure. He was killed. By Kane. Don't you want to get revenge on him? Don't you want to make it right? Work with me and you can do that. Revenge? What a funny notion. The only one who should be trying to avenge a dead body is said body's spirit. It's each individual's responsibility to try and survive a dangerous world. If somebody perishes and it's by their own merit that they fail. Kane killed Devon? I imagine there was a good reason for it. What kind of reason would that be? Quiet, Polly. The adults are speaking. Odin, you can't be serious right now. Your son was murdered by Kane. Your legacy snatched away. You won't retaliate in the slightest? You knocked down my company, and I only sick two idiots on you. I believe in live and let live. But why are... I already told you. You're not the first I've met with this sort of ambition. Not the second either. My mind started racing back. Besting you was a requirement to make... To, to make to anybody you back? That's not a sentence. You told me that. So then... Kane won your approval? In many ways, yes. Now you brought yourself some value, entering my domain, solving the brother's god puzzle, Besting my sons in business and combat, but still, you should not get me to switch ships that easily. I thought about Odin's words. I thought about them for a while, then I had an idea. It was a bad one, to be sure. It was a saying amongst lawyers. Never ask a witness a question you don't know the answer to. By the same token, there should be a saying amongst swindlers. Never enter a gamble you don't know how to win. But I was running out of time and certainly out of options. And so, alright then, let me win your, back your backing by besting you. Oh? The most talented deserve to thrive, right? If I can prove myself right here, right now, then will you cooperate with me? Hmm. An interesting proposal. Quite interesting indeed. And pray tell, how do you wish to prove yourself? By that game, that card game. Let's finish the match that was interrupted. Finish the match of Star Alignment. Oh. You think that's a worthy enough challenge to prove yourself? I mean, let's finish it the way we left it. You're the ruler, I'm the dreamer, and you get to choose where, who gets what cards. And I'll still beat you. I could see by the look in Odin's eyes that I had him. It was too poetic, he couldn't possibly resist. Good. Good, good. This is a good final test indeed. An impossible task fitting for an impossible ask. One round though. I'm on a time crunch. 
Yes, one round. One round to decide the fate of Pantheon. Shall the outsider be put in their place once and for all? Or will the path to salvation open up? The only way to learn the truth is to duel. It's time to do it, do it, do it. <laughs> As Odin began to set things up, I felt my brain go into overdrive. Focus. Focus. I had to win from the dreamer's side with cards 1 through 6. Somehow. I got myself into this gamble without thinking. I certainly couldn't get myself out in the same way. What is Odin going to do?